Hi friends, good morning, happy Wednesday. Yeah, happy Wednesday. How is everybody's week going? Um, have you guys experienced warfare or craziness? If so, it's all good. That just means your breakthrough is bigger than what you think, but your, your breakthrough, Satan knows how big it is. So he's going to bother you. So we're going to push through, okay? Your, your breakthrough is bigger than what you think, but Satan knows what that breakthrough is going to look like. So he's trying to break you before it breaks through, okay? And on that note, let's go ahead and get into this word. Uh, I'm not sure what the Lord is going to have me title this, but he's saying the water is breaking, the water is breaking. Um, this comes from a dream that I had on. Give me one second. I had this dream on April the 17th. Um, and again, after I had this dream, hold on, guys. After I had this dream, I heard the water is breaking back to back. The water is breaking, right? Let me take a sip of my coffee, y'all. Bear with me this morning. Um, this has been a, a productive morning, which is good. Um, I, I'm starting to go back to the gym, wake up at 5 a.m., get my, my, my self together and go to the gym early in the morning versus going after work just so I can get it done and get it out of the way, um, which is what I used to do a lot like a year ago um, or a couple years ago. But then you get in the habit of just going after work. But if you get it done in the morning, it's done. So I'm still in my gym clothes, um, but I figured I'd jump on here before I uh, shower and then start work. Um, but I had this dream on April 17th. I can't even get, let me take some coffee off. Please hold. I had this dream on April 17th. And after the dream, the Lord gave me the water is breaking back to back. And he kept giving me the word downpour, downpour. The definition of a downpour is heavy and sudden rainfall with a significance with a significant, as in an abundance, um, amount of water in a short period of time. Y'all better catch that. Down for the definition is heavy and sudden, heavy and sudden rainfall with a significant, aka an abundance, in the amount of water in a short period of time. Downpours normally occur suddenly with little or no warning. Y'all better catch this spiritually. The Lord is saying the water is breaking, okay? In this dream, I was in a bedroom and there was a young lady. I didn't know the young lady in the dream, but she was in the bed and I was on the floor, like in front of the bed. She was in the bed, I was on the floor. And I looked out of the window and it just began to downpour. I mean, the, the downpour was pouring, like the rain was just so heavy and it was coming so quick, right? It was just pouring, pouring. This was really, really heavy rain. It was a downpour. And as I'm sitting on the floor, again, she's sitting on the bed in this bedroom and I felt water begin to fall. And as I looked at the ceiling, there was a leak in the ceiling and the water was dripping and it was dripping on me um, as I was sitting on the floor, right? And I remember getting maybe a sheet or something to put on the floor to catch the water. And that was pretty much the end of the dream. Okay, let me break this down to you how the Lord gave it to me. The heavy rains represented cleansing, renewal, fertility, blessings, growth, and overflow, okay? Cleansing, renewal, fertility, blessings, growth, and overflow, aka the rain represented an abundance of blessings, a downpour of blessings, a downpour of blessings. The leak through the ceiling represented limitations and barriers being removed and broken by the hand of the Lord. 
it shows that it shows God bringing you, whoever this word is for you, the things that you thought were impossible into your life. He always knows where to find you. My face is itching, Holy Spirit. He always knows where to find you in order to bless you when the time is right. So again, the ceiling represented the hand of the Lord breaking barriers, breaking barriers. If there's a leak in the ceiling, there's a break somewhere in that rooftop. Y'all better catch this. That's causing that rain to seep through. There's a breaking in the rooftop, okay? The, the leak in the ceiling represented limitations and barriers being removed and broken by the hand of the Lord. It shows God bringing the things into your life that you thought were impossible, right? Shows him breaking through these barriers that you saw as barriers because there is no barrier for God. And if a leak is coming inside of the house, it starts on the outside first. <laughs> Y'all better catch this. If a leak is happening on the ceiling, it starts on the rooftop. It starts on the outside. It starts on the top of this house. God sits higher than you. So that leak shows him breaking barriers to make sure that those blessings drop directly on you. He knows where to find you, whoever this word is for. The rain falling upon me represents me or you, whoever this is for, being the recipient of these blessings and that you are in the right place at the right time to receive these inherited blessings, right at the foot of the Lord, humbled and lowly. I was on the floor. The floor, me being on the floor of this bedroom, a bedroom, um, it's symbolic of many things in prophetic dreams, but in this dream, it represents a place of intimacy. You can also look at this as a marriage bed. I was on the floor. Someone else was in the bed. Y'all better catch this because I ain't gonna break all that down for you. Let God give it to you how you see fit. Somebody else was in this place of comfort and relaxation. Somebody else was in that that uh, intimate space in the in the bed. They were in that place of comfort, of relaxation, of rest. I was on the floor. But God is saying, I'm in the right place. You're in the right place, right at his feet. There was no other leaks in this bedroom besides the one directly over my head. And that rain began to drip down and fall on me. God is saying, you're in the right position. You may be looking like, man, Lord, someone else is in my place of rest, in my place of comfort. And this does not just have to do with no marriage. So y'all marriage little people that just like to make everything about marriage. This is not necessarily a marriage word. This word can go in so many different directions. So don't idolize marriage. Be happy that God is sending it your way, but don't idolize it. This goes beyond marriage. You're looking like someone else is in my intimate space that God promised me. Someone else is in my place of rest and comfort while I'm over here on the floor and it seems like nothing is happening. You feel like you're at the lowest you could possibly be um, opposite of what God has told you, but God is saying you're in the right place to receive this overflow, this downpour. You're in the right place for these, for this water, for these blessings, for this abundance to break through, to burst over you. And excuse my words, it's early. You're in the right place, humble and lowly. <laughs> Catch that. Uh, who else made themselves humble and lowly? You're in the right place at his feet. He's saying, despite the appearance of a disruption as in an inconvenience, if I see a leak in the ceiling of my apartment or you see a leak in the ceiling of your house, you look at that as a disruption. It's an inconvenience. Now you have to find a way to get this fixed, right? The Lord is saying, despite the appearance of a disruption or inconvenience, AKA the leaky ceiling, a transformative force by the hand of God is entering your life. It looks like things are being disrupted, but they're being disrupted so that the overflow can fall upon you so that his blessings can be bestowed upon you, can be bestowed upon you. It looks like a disruption. It is not. It is God shaking things to make sure that those blessings fall exactly upon the person that they're supposed to fall on. 
It doesn't matter who's in your, your place of rest and comfort and intimacy. It doesn't matter that you feel like you're at your lowest point on the floor. Can't go no lower than the floor. But God is saying you're in the right place, right at his feet, humbled and lowly. There's a, a, a the water is breaking. Help me, Lord. Help me get these words out. The water is breaking. There's a downpour taking place. What looks like it, help me, Lord Jesus. It looks like you're out of place. It looks like you're as low as you can go. It looks like someone else is in a place of rest and comfort that God promised you, but you're in the right place at the right time. And I'm going to share, because uh, he led me to a word that Sister Leslie posted, I don't know how long ago, but I'm going to uh, post that word. I'm going to post it in the community uh, tab. I'm also going to link it in the comment section of this word. That's a now word. That's an hour, word, and I believe it's something to the sort of downpour. But I'm going to link that word for you guys, because if this word is for you, I want you to go back and listen to that word. There's about to be a downpour in your life. The water is breaking, and it's falling upon you. It's not a disruption. You're in the right place at the right time. And one thing the Lord spoke to my heart this morning as I was working out, he brought me back to the story of Ruth right? And the Lord was saying, <laughs> this is probably going to sting some of y'all, but the Lord was saying that if he doesn't show favor upon you when it comes to man, right? And you could take this as, as a marriage portion of this word, okay? If he doesn't show favor upon you when it comes to man, you're wasting your time. You're just working for the man. You're just working for the man. You're never going to be anything aside from a maid, a worker working for this man. But when God shows favor upon you and he highlights you in the eyes of this man, when this man can see you through the eyes of the Lord, when the Lord allows this man to see through his lenses and that favor drops upon you, your position changes. It doesn't matter who was there before you. If God has not ordained you for a position for that position, and you're over here clinging on to some man, all you're going to be doing is working for him for the rest of your life, working for this man. God has to show favor upon you for that for your position to go from a worker to, to a wife. That's all over, from a worker to a wife. But if God has not favored you in, the, the, in this man's eyes, you're just going to be a worker, a maid, working for him, chasing this man. And he brought me to the story of Ruth. And if you go back and we're going to read it together in two different versions, actually, I'm not going to read the whole book of Ruth, but when Ruth went to gleam in um, Boaz's field, there were women already there. Boaz already had maids working for him. <laughs> Catch this. He already had maids working for him when she got there. She was the last one. So it was a bunch of women that were there before her. But don't you know the last will be first and the first shall be last. It doesn't matter who gets to a position before you. When God favors you, that's when your position changes. When God favors you, that's when your position changes. But God, when he has a position for you, that position is on hold until you get there. It doesn't matter who comes first. There were women already working for Boaz. Catch that, spiritually, literally, all the things. There were women already working for Boaz. He had maids working for him in the field. When she came, he told her exactly who she was and that God showed favor upon her and so forth. And he said, stay in my field. Glean from my field. And I'm paraphrasing, stay in my field. Glean from my field. Stay behind the women. Don't go to any other field. You Like you're safe here. He told her, stay behind the other women and glean from this field. And we know the whole story of how her position went from gleaming in his field to owning that field as his wife, okay? So let, let's read this. I'm gonna read from Ruth chapter two. I'm gonna start at uh, verse eight. So Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, this is the NIV version, so Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean 
in another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who worked for me. <laughs> it was already working for him, okay? <laughs> Stay here with the women who worked for me. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the women. I have told the men not to lay a hand on you. And wherever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground and she asked him, why have I found such favor in your eyes that you noticed me a foreigner? Boaz replied, I've been told about you. I've been told, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother in your homeland and came to live with a people you did not know. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Let me tell you, there was already women there working for him, but he showed favor. Ruth found favor through Boaz. It was the favor that God had already bestowed upon her. It didn't matter that she came last and there was already women there. They were simply just working for him. That's all that they were ever going to do is work for him. <laughs> That's it. Their position was never going to change into anything else. Ruth didn't go there to glean in his field to work for him. She went there to gain a harvest. Yep. Yep. Are you catching this? It didn't matter that she was last. She was chosen and she was favored by God. It doesn't matter that you feel like you're on the floor and somebody else is in the bed. God knows where to find you. And when God has chosen to favor you, it is a wrap. It is a wrap. Ruth was on the floor too. She started on the floor too. But she went from that threshing flow, okay, to being in the place of intimacy with her rich husband, which meant she was then rich. Her position changed. She didn't have to glean in the fields after women. I'm sure the women still worked for Boaz, but she went from a worker to a wife and she was never working for him. Ruth was working for God this whole time. So I pray, I pray that this blesses you, but the Lord is saying um, there's a, 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 there's a cleansing, a renewal, a fertility. Uh, there, there's cleansing. Help me, Holy Spirit, get these words out. There's a cleansing, a renewal. There's fertility. There's blessings. There's growth. And there's overflow that's finding you. You feel like you're on the floor. You can't go no lower. But little do you know you're in the right position. It doesn't matter who's in that place, that bed, that marriage bed, that, that bed, that place of intimacy, that place of comfort, that place of rest. The blessings are being poured upon you. God is breaking barriers to bless you. Don't look at this leak as a disruption. It's not a disruption. God is just breaking the barriers that you saw as barriers because he doesn't have any barriers, but he's breaking the barriers that you thought were hindering your blessings. When it's time, God knows where and how to find you. He doesn't have to search high and low. He only sits high. <laughs> There's no low for him. He only sits high. He can see everything. He knows where to find you at the right time. So that is the word, guys. Uh, the Lord's reign, R-E-I-G-N, and his reign, R-A-I-N. Okay? <laughs> the Lord's reign, his power, his, his uh, I'm just going to leave it right there. Because if not, I'm going to keep stuttering. But um, the Lord's reign, R-E-I-G-N, and his reign. Catch that. That's the word, guys. I love you. I hope you have a great day. I'm going to finish my coffee. And yeah, I'm going to get, get my day started. But I love you guys. I hope you have a great day. I pray this word blesses you. Um, yeah. I pray that this word blesses you. That's it.
Love you guys. Bye. Oh, before I even end this, this word, um, I have so many people that have been asking me about my sister and how she's doing. So I'm going to give you guys an update. She is still in the hospital. Um, since I left there, the beginning, I left there April 1st was when I flew back home. Um, since leaving there, my sister was released one time from the hospital. She was only out of the hospital for less than 24 hours before they readmitted her into the hospital. So she is still in the hospital. Keep praying for her. I appreciate your prayers. Um, I've had people email me like, how's your sister? And, um, and stuff like that. But she's still in the hospital. Um, so yeah, she's still there. Just keep praying for her. I appreciate you guys. And yeah. Uh, it's all in God's hands. I feel a lot of peace over everything. So I'm okay. But thank you guys. I just wanted to give that quick update before I keep, kept saying I needed to update you guys. And I just, when I'm like giving a word, I kept forgetting, but she's okay. She's good. Uh, but I love you guys. Have a great day. Bye.